Chuggles, welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, episode 78. This is going to be a short today. I purposely, purposely decided that I was only going to do one beer, so I only grabbed one beer, because before the other times where I carried those back-to-back episodes, I intended them on them being shorter, but then I just got so juiced up. But today, I guarantee it will be one. I only grabbed one beer. We're going to start off with the top. I got a bunch of notes. Hopefully, it goes maybe a little bit longer. We'll see. We'll see where the action takes us. This is going to be Heart State Brewing Wicked. It's an Imperial Pumpkin Spiced Stout coming in at 10%. So maybe it's a good thing that I'm doing one. Steph will keep me honest if I'm going to go off the rails here. I got a bunch of notes. I need to go with the crack. I'm thirsty. I just got back to Ohio. I just got done with work. All of all of this, all this cacophony of fun is going to envelop you in hopefully a smooth and short listening experience. There we go with the crack. Uh, boozy nose. Not much else. I mean, you can tell it's a stout. We got so much to cover. It's been a while since I talked to you guys since episode 250. I'm recording this on a Wednesday. I don't know what's up with JT. JT and I deconflicted. So long story short, I spent a couple of days up in Minnesota, uh, four four and a half days. And Monday, when we typically record, I uh, got uh, tasked with doing a briefing later in the day, which would have butted us up against uh, JT's parental duties. So it was an 11-hour day for me. We weren't going to do it. I was like, JT, you've got this. And JT told me, People don't crave the JT short episodes. I go, I know they crave the JT short episodes. Everyone asks for them all the time. Everyone's clamoring. Chuggalo Dave. Sorry that I move over the camera. But I'm just so excited. Jazzed up. Uh, Chuggalo Dave is like, where's the episode? Other people are clamoring for the episode. And yesterday was my travel day. So then I worked, uh, sat at the airport. I thought about doing one at the airport. Um, if I could have got a quiet space, I would have. That would have been interesting. Maybe I'll do one in the future. And then I got here, and I was like, okay, JT JT posted for all the Chuggalos that he didn't get to it one day. He was going to get to it the next day. And I was like, I got to put something out there. I got to satiate the masses. And so hopefully that's what this is going to do until he posts because he says he's got a special treat. I'm looking forward to it. So we've got that. So whenever JT drops it, please support him. He loves it. He loves doing this. Oh, I'm red on the mic. Hopefully it's not too loud. I might have to adjust my mic. Let me see. Let me drop that a little bit. Okay. Hopefully I'm aware of it now. I just bring in, I was burying the red the whole time on my mixer. All right. So I apologize. Hopefully you guys are sticking with me. I'll have to listen to it. I already cracked the beer. So I'm going to need to ruminate on this one a little bit more. 10%. I don't taste it preliminarily. Okay. Here's my question for the Chuggalos, and we can respond um, down below. Episode 250 has been getting rave reviews, lots of commentary, lots of congratulatory info um, from all across the masses. Bang Helsing on there. Of course, Stev and Chuggalo Chuggalo Mom. So thank you for the commentary. I know it's been a week and a half since we got to it. It was funner than what it probably came out on video doing all of that. Uh, getting those guys together and surprising them with that PowerPoint. A lot of inside jokes there. JT's overlay needs to be applauded. Can we uh, can we ap- applaud? It was complete money, uh, that overlay that he did. Um, a couple of uh, Easter eggs in there that people caught up on. All right, so traveling. When I travel, especially when I'm going and I'm going to be working and it's just going to be a brief turnaround, my drinking habits have changed. Now, I will go out and drink with friends or and catch up, but I notice like if I bring something to the office up there or if I bring something back to the hotel room, the last year, and I was going through my records, I primarily drink in seltzers. So I'm wondering if I'm just trying to worry about my bloat, which is something I felt today, eating a lot of sodium-rich foods, not being able to prepare my own food, eating out a lot. Even even though like a couple of the places that we go will have healthier options, a few of them don't. So I find myself like just really bloated up and I'm wondering if other people, other chugglos have the same issue like when they travel. I travel so many times during the year and I'm very limited to the food selections available like on base or wherever I'm at and I don't want to like always borrow a car or something like that and go get fresh options. So I, I feel like 
I try to limit myself in like what I drink during my personal time. So this last time was seltzers. Uh, I could get into it. One was like a pure black untitled art. It was just their black seltzer. It was just a black on black matte can that you had to like see the foil. It was not good. I will be grading that. I I took some notes on it, uh, put it in my planner. The other one I had was uh, a Humble Forger, and they just put out quality products. Um, they're they're slowly creeping up in the power play list that you would get from like a 450, Drecker, Brewing Project, uh, Three Floyds, again, Toppling Goliath. They they always need to be messaged or outshouted, if you will. So that was it. So that that's interesting. I find that, again, as I travel, my drinking habits change. This is super muted for being a spice latte. All right. Again... Another another notice. So like in the last couple of weeks, I've been getting a lot more untapped friend requests, which was awesome. So if you haven't uh, added me yet, please, because I'll, I'll add anyone. But some of them, I try to see like their connection to me. Most of them are friends or acquaintances or we share mutual friends. A lot of a lot of people from England recently. So if that's cool, if it's the podcast reaching out, welcome. Uh, listen, a few people from like Leeds. And I was trying to think like the last time I was there, I checked into a beer Maybe it was a comment or something, but most of my comments uh, kick back to the podcast. So, it, I mean, if we're reaching over there, I love it. Welcome. Welcome, Chugglos from uh, England. But And then welcome all new ones because we just got our 94th sub. Once we get to 100, it will uh, I'll just start cascading. So I don't know where – I didn't notice when that one happened, but that's awesome. So an, another Chugglo, welcome to the family. That's why it's important to keep up the curiosity in which we uh, publish these uh, episodes. It's just awesome. Okay. Big news. And I'm going to have to put this below when I write the description, advent calendars. So I was messaged, uh, from the fine people at the, uh, barrel house. Uh, again, we are building on veterans day. They open at 11 o'clock. They're expecting us. So now they're trying to get numbers. And I've had a few people up North that I'll be delivering, uh, advent calendars to ask for whales. And, I'm glad that we were able to codify this, and this is going to be – JT has even heard this yet either, is because there's a lot more Anchorage beers, and we've talked about Anchorage on, on the podcast, on the mothership before, and there's a lot of like Anchorage like $60 to $70 price points, and Barrel House is a purveyor of Anchorage beers too. And um, the Barrel House goes, well, we have a few of these, and I go, that might limit it. So we've tried to not stymie – the creativity that they put in the advent calendar will give like tips or, you know, because some people don't prefer sours or whatever, but uh, stuff that's more uh, not available or not year round or specialized or anything. Because last year, the most expensive beer that we had was the $33 beer. But if we put a couple of those Anchorage ones in there that, you know, $60, $70 price point, that's going to eat it up. So then I said for a target for the advent calendar, because I haven't said this before, I said, try to keep it around 300. So, so we'll see that it gives them a lot of room to explore. If they want to pull something from the, the, the back, something that's been dated, specialized, because then I'm trying to give them a number. So again, if you're interested, we still, we still got room to explain, expand. Please let me know. Uh, I am taking six calendars back to Wisconsin. So I've got a little bit more room in my car, but even if you're here local or there's a way that we could get it shipped to you, if you're listening from England or whatever, we, there are definitely methods that we could explore. Obviously feel free to come on down when we actually build it. If you're local here with us, uh, I can give you the information, but the barrel house, it's readily available. It's in, uh, in Dayton, uh, right on third street. All right. All over the place here. So let's get to the, let's get to the beer. Let's get to the beer. Okay, like I said, booze on the nose. This is from Heart State. Again, Heart State. Oops. Like JT says, we always go the opposite way. Is You can find out more at heartstatebrewing.com. You have to do the 21 or over check. They're out of Columbus. Uh, so just close to here. And the first thing that you see on their website is they have those uh, pottery mugs. They're not, they're, they're rough. Everyone's unique because they're handcrafted, which is really neat. Uh, uh, my best friend, Chuggalo Mikey got me a couple of those from the brewing project. Um, and I use them. Sometimes they're a little small 
uh, you, uh, for pouring beer into, like you feel like you're going to slosh around, but they're just high character pieces that bring any bar a lot of cred because it's just not like a glass pint, but it's just a little more rustic. Every Everyone knows what I'm talking about, hopefully. Um, if not, I can put some links on down below, but it goes check out our beers. So an interesting website outside of the picture. Ooh, what I've always said about this they have their year-round calendar and their seasonal calendar, which is excellent. The original, the thing, though, of the beer that I'm drinking, this might be a one-off, is they don't have Wicked on there. They have a standard can, so this is more of a Halloween color with the purple and the black. But their standard can is just a white top, the same marquee, if you will, that looks like a marquee, which is then it's the color of whatever beer it's going to be, if it's a year round or whatever. But typically a white top can. This is just a Halloween inspired one. I cannot find anything about us. So they have their room about their tap. So it's a very rough uh, website. And uh, it reminds you that um, on the bottom of it, you can only be here if you're 21. But uh, they have a Facebook and an Instagram link. They, maybe they have more on their Instagram. I don't have Instagram. I'm one of those weirdos. But, yeah, nothing there. So check out heartstatebrewing.com. It's a fairly simple website. But drink whatever your heart desires. And then they have their food menu, hours, upcoming events, and games. Ooh, they are known for their pinball. Assortment of pinball and pool tables. Pool tables. It's not something too common in breweries these days just because they take up so much space and you're trying to turn over um, so many tables, if you will. And uh, I don't know the profitability of a pool table, but pinball because you can put it back up against a corner. Let me go down my checklist. 94 subs. Oh, that's something else we talked about. Because people in this Advent calendar related, people are asking for whales. Do you... People, Chuggalo specifically, seek out those beers. Um, do you make a like a rule of thumb? Like for me, I'm trying to build a, a, a cellar, you know, where I can take stuff out of. Is that more of a thing or are people just seeking stuff that they can put in their fridge and drink, you know, responsibly within the next, you know, three to six months r rather than have something that they're going to be seeing in the future? Just lots of questions, lots of things I was like, oh, I don't have much to talk about. I'm just sitting here jotting down notes as I'm talking about beer. All right, so this beer, I'm three quarters of the way done with it. It's warmed up a little bit, and you you mind that with a stout, again, to get those adjuncts out. Being a pumpkin spice latte stout. Okay, sweet, sinister, and maliciously delicious. I like that. I like how that flows off the palate 10 percent okay off the top rope this beer i'm gonna forget about it um it's not gonna get in the pantheon for me that a uh warlock uh pumpkin stout or a uh southern tier pumpkin both beers which i uh i've had recently in the last couple of weeks and i will buy every year because those are my benchmark if you will for october october halloween-esque beers uh, this one won't be there. I was intrigued by it. A four pack, uh, pint cans. Uh, this is very muted. I don't get any of the, the, the latte kind of that creaminess or that sweetness. The bitterness from the stout is there, but none of the gimmick. Um, if it is spice, it's over spiced because my palate just feels raw uh, and unable to discern anything else besides the fact that I'm drinking a robust stout. Uh, on the palate, it hides the booze well. The booze is only on the nose. I'm not getting any of the 10%. Uh, you could obviously give this to me. I would know it's a stout, but I wouldn't know if it's six or I, I, I wouldn't guess 10. So I guess that's a preference. But that uh, dryness from all that spice, which I can't discern any of it. I can't, you know, I would say clover, allspice. There's not not cinnamon or nutmeg or anything like that that you know you would think with a hallmark of like a uh, a Halloween Oktoberfest pumpkin pumpkin esque beer. Um, it's going to be forgettable off the top rope. I'm going to give this a 3.0. Uh, I got three more cans of it. I'll pitch one to JT so he can 
do his rebuttal to this since it's going to be a short. I've got a lot of them that I've sent out to him, especially with the uh, two episodes I've carried. And, uh, you know, even, even though untapped isn't mandatory, as we alluded to on episode 250, uh, I just don't know. I don't know how I uh, fill out the spreadsheet with that. But that's it. That's all I got is just this a uh, little bit of relaxation. Sorry about the delay uh, between now and the end of the year. I know we've got one deconfliction that we have to do. Otherwise, we're getting into the advent calendar where they're going to come fast and furious. So hopefully you like them. Hopefully they we keep them truncated and shorter. I got a couple of trips under my belt between now and then. But until then, uh, keep those glasses frosty and have a wonderful day. Cheers.